G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue our New Year's resolution series for each of the 18 clubs. And today we are doing the GWS Giants. If you're unaware or if you're new to the channel, I have been working through this 18 team series from reverse alphabetical order from the Western Bulldogs and now to the Giants. And of course, I'll be going to the Adelaide Crows. So you can find that in a playlist on this channel called uh, AFL New Year's Resolutions or something like that. I'll put it in an icon uh, at the top right uh, corner of this video. I've also analyzed every team's best 22 for 2024. And I've also projected their best 22 three years from now in three different series, all on different playlists on this channel. So you can go big that content if you're interested at all. So obviously today we are doing GWS and the premise of this video is to isolate seven or eight things uh, that each individual club can look to try and achieve to improve their overall position in 2024. So some of these are on a micro scale, some of these are on a macro scale, some of these are long term, some of these are short term, but I've picked out I think seven here for the GWS Giants who ultimately did have a very successful season when you consider last year was their first season under Adam Kingsley after a poor finish in 2022. They shot back to relevance and they did it basically all in the second half of the year which was an outstanding effort and really really unlucky not to get into the grand final to play the Brisbane Lions which would have been bizarre so I'm going to crack into the resolutions I have for the Giants this year if you could do me a favor if you are enjoying the content or you are new to the channel and you're looking for AFL analytical content or general AFL content this would be a great place to subscribe and I'd really appreciate it if you supported the channel but anyway, let's talk about the Giants. And the first uh, resolution I have for them is, is a simple one based on a lot of what I just said, which is simply to start the season better. Now, there is obviously some context to this. Adam Kingsley was a new coach, and it took them a little while to click. But when they clicked, they really clicked. Uh, but obviously, after the buy in round 15, GWS were in 14th position, and they were just not in the finals race. At least, uh, that was the perception. Obviously, it turned out that they were very much in the finals race. But you also consider they were in the bottom four at the end of four different rounds, and including the latest one of those was round 12. So when you consider the position they were in to where they're at now... It's just absolute chalk and cheese, and some of that can be attributed to the fact that they simply just took a little while to uh, adjust to a new game plan and have some belief. But it was a real feature of the year where they won seven of their last nine games, and they won it, I forget how many different venues, was it nine? Either way, we saw what GWS is capable of, and there's no doubt, even though there were some extenuating circumstances adjusting to a new coach, I'm sure it will be a resolution for them to be much more consistent throughout the entire season next year, get a top four finish potentially. I think that's realistic for them. And if they do that with their known track record of playing well in finals, who knows how far they can go. The next point I have is to find some midfield successes, okay? So I've made this point before, when they lost to Antoine Hopper, uh, at the end of 2022, it made it a little bit trickier to see the next evolution of their midfield. Now, I do know that they've got Finn Callahan. Uh, Tom Green's already a young guy, but he's already in that side. I suppose as is Finn Callahan, but less proven. But the reason I uh, mentioned the midfield specifically is with the exits of Taranto and Hopper, you're looking at a midfield mix of guys like Canelio, Callan Ward, Josh Kelly. I mean, Toby Green rolls, rolls through there. My point being is a lot of that core midfield group is getting towards the end of their career and it, it's not an immediate problem for them because GWS are still a fantastic side and Toby Green in particular is arguably in the best form of his life albeit mostly as a forward but naturally in a few years time uh, these they're going to need to uncover a few more talents to support guys like Tom Green and Finn Callahan. Are these guys already on the list? Uh, it remains to be seen. So another option is uh, Harry Roust, and we saw a little bit of him at AFL level. Looks fairly talented. Xavier O'Halloran is a guy that's played about 50 games now. has been in and out of the side. Ended the year pretty well from memory. Uh, and is a, is a chance to, to become the sort of guy who could be best 22 in the next evolution of this midfield. Then some lesser lights like Darcy Jones. I don't think he's played a game yet because he did his ACL when he got drafted. Drafted as a wingman, though. Uh, Connor Stone is another player that uh, was drafted on, on high upside. Uh, he hasn't really put it together at AFL level. Ryan Angwin as well uh, is, is on the list. I don't know a whole heap about him, nor do I know much about Jacob Ware or Harvey Thomas, their latest uh, academy pick. So we know there's some names there. To what extent they are quality names who could form the, the nucleus of their next group. I'm not too sure, but I think they need to either recruit for this or develop what they already have to make sure that there's a, there's a succession line here for the midfield uh, that doesn't see them drop off a cliff. The next point I have, again, this is a more of a list management one, but I put have another good year of list retention. So obviously for most of GWS's existence, there's been bad off seasons uh, where they've lost 
a whole heap of players in one go. In some cases, it's been more hectic than others. Specifically, 2020, I think they lost like six or seven players, uh, namely Jeremy Cameron, Zach Williams, Aiden Kaur, Zach Langdon, Jai Caldwell, Jackson Haitley also walked into the draft. There might even be one other that I missed there. However, you contrast that to the end of this year, and they only lost one player, and it was Matthew Flynn who joined the West Coast Eagles, and Matthew Flynn wasn't really in the frame for their best 22 anyway. So that is the best offseason I can remember from a Giants point of view. And perhaps they're moving towards a future now where they're not just kind of bleeding a lot of the talent that they're producing. Uh, the good thing is I've had a look at their out-of-contract list this year, and there's no real big name. So Isaac Cummings out of contract, good player, probably not a real chance to leave. Braden Pruce again, potentially, but considering the lack of rucks onto the Giants list, I don't know if they would let that happen. Jesse Hogan, probably not going to leave, but out of contract nonetheless. And then there's Nick Haynes, who's a little bit more up in the air, considering there was a talk of him leaving. But nonetheless, it's not as though some of their absolute gun players are out of contract this year, so that's a good position to be in. You do also then consider some pre-agents. So um, a couple of pre-agents, in other words, players that will be restricted free agents at the end of 2025 will be Sam Taylor and Brent Daniels, uh, both absolute guns. There's also Lockie Ash and Finn Callahan who will be out of contract. So I think just from a list management point of view, sorting those out, sometimes you see uh, pre-agents and players out of contract a year early request trades. So things to keep in mind, but overall, I'll back the Giants in to improve their list retention, and I'm sure it's going to be one of their resolutions, if you like. The next resolution I have for them is to keep up the momentum of the progress that they've made with their forward line, okay? So in recent times, I would have said that the Giants forward line, particularly the, the tall socks, have been a genuine weakness for them. However, we saw them start to click, particularly in the second half of 2023. Jesse Hogan started playing his best football for the club. He ended the year with 49 goals. Even Jake Riccardi took some steps. He kicked 35 goals, and he's just hit that 50-game mark, or just short of it, uh, which means he's potentially to see some genuine improvements, start to hit his prime. And we know Aaron Cadman, number one draft pick, played 12 games in his first year. Could we see him come in and play a bigger role in 2024? I would expect that to be the case. And because he can play higher up the ground, I can see him contributing to them as, as early as next year. So overall, I think continue this, this progress that they've made. It helped that Toby Green kicked 66 goals, I think, in 2023, which is by far and away the most he's ever kicked in a season. They've also got a few other forward line guns like Brent Daniels and stuff like that. Just draft of Phoenix Goddard, who might feature early for them so I think this has turned from a bit of a weakness into was potentially going to be a strength so I'd just say keep up the momentum with the the progress of this forward line another resolution I have for them and this one's probably a little bit bold but I think I think they should aim to be or become the best back line in the league and I know that that's probably applicable to every team in the league. Every team should strive for that. But I think for the Giants, it is somewhat possible. Sam Taylor, for instance, is probably one of the best key backs in the league. I say probably. He definitely is one of the best. You can make a case he is the best. Uh, that's all subjective to some extent. But uh, the only reason he missed All-Australian this year, in my opinion, is probably just the fact that he didn't play enough games because he was an absolute star. And I think uh, towards the back end as well, I really noticed Jack Buckley. Uh, form a really good partnership with Sam Taylor. Connor Iden also had a really good year. So from an individual point of view, this GWS backline has a lot of strengths. And obviously there's Lockie Whitfield to consider as well. Isaac Cumming has a lot of potential. They were the second best rebound side in 2023. But when you look at the top eight, they conceded more points than anyone else other than Port Adelaide. So statistically, it's not absolutely sound yet, but in terms of the, the dynamic and the potential of that dynamic and the star power, it has the potential to become the best backline in the league, I think. Some of those stats as well could be inflated by the fact that GWS did start the year poorly, and I think Sam Taylor did miss a bit of football at the start of that year as well. That being said, though, I think they can really aim to crank down on this as a potential hallmark of their team. And overall, uh, uh, the final resolution is a very broad one, just about what they can achieve in 2024. And I just think that the expectation is to be to go deep in September again. Given their late season surge and how good they were, and the fact that they nearly knocked Collingwood out of the finals on their home deck and played all of their finals away, didn't they? Yes, they beat Port Adelaide, they beat St Kilda at the G. This team is capable. So if you extrapolate that form, if they can do that for a whole season, given how much they tend to play well in finals despite their ladder position, a little bit like the Bulldogs, uh, if GWS actually got a top four finish, they would be a real dangerous candidate. And when you consider the game plan is outstanding, the individual brilliance is there, but I also think there's a little bit of innate pressure here with their window. And when you look at their list breakdown, there's a lot of guys that are pre-primer. In my first list age analysis video that I did like a month ago or whatever, 
we, we identify that GWS have a lot of guys that are about to sort of enter their prime or in that pre-prime um, phase of their career, if you like. However, a lot of the guys that they rely on, particularly in the midfield, are on the eight, older end, like I alluded to. And Toby Green's their best player, arguably Sam Taylor is, but Toby Green's probably their best player, Sam Taylor's second. Kelly, Cornelia, Whitfield, the, these guys will be hard to replace. So my point being here is they're not, they're not absolute veterans yet. That being said, the window probably exists or at least the immediate window that they have probably exists while these guys are still on the list. So I think they need to be striking with their list profile sooner rather than later. And now Adam Kingsley has given us faith that uh, he doesn't necessarily need more time to build this side into a good one. He's already done it. So backing that up in 2024 by at least going deep uh, would be absolutely the goal for them in 2024. Anyway, guys, that's just my take on the GWS Giants and my resolutions for them for next year. Obviously, a lot is going right at that football club at the moment. So this one was a tough one to really try and critique them. I uh, can't wait for Collingwood. Uh, but as always, guys, I, I appreciate you guys watching the content. I hope you're enjoying it. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.